Yeah, other people, like artists, discover the work that I'm doing. This is an artist called Christoph Schlingensief. So, um, a, einen umtriebigen Künstler, a bustling artist with energy. I met a lot of people, but I never met someone with that much energy. When I met, he was dying. He had a concert. And we start to speak. This guy could speak with you until 2 o'clock in the morning. You go to sleep, he will write until 7 o'clock in the morning, meet you at 8, and ask you if he read his email, and you could reply. And he was writing like, huge. <laughs> so, and I say, yes, yes, I read it. I will give you the answer later. <laughs> and we're being turning in Burkina Faso, looking for a place to build an opera. So, Christoph is a great artist. A lot of people loved him. The development agencies hated him. And in the middle of all, Francis Kere, the guy doing little school in Africa. Everyone came to say, why are you working with this monster? I couldn't tell this, this, to these people how inspiring this guy was. I couldn't. Working with him, like it was like a 100 years introduction in art, into performance, in inspiration. It was unbelievable. So we keep turning through the desert of Burkina Faso. And I keep drawing because he was eating, consuming ideas asking for drawing. I did some drawing. He wanted to show to some friends. The next day, I could see this in every newspaper in Germany. Conservative, uh, whatever, call them. And I, what a guy are you, my friend? No, no, let us do. So he has no time he has to produce. And here, I discovered someone that worked like that. I will tell you who later. So look at what we're doing. I start to make models, and he found a piece of land far from Ouagadougou. The government wanted to give him a piece of land in one of the best locations in Ouagadougou because they were expecting to have an opera de la Bastille or the Sydney opera. <laughs> but this is not what Christoph wanted to do. He wanted to do a so-called social plastic. He loved Joseph Boyce. And through him, I have to learn all about this and be able to work with this guy. Can you imagine what pressure? And that in the middle of the Burkina desert. But look, look at what we have done. One day I was sitting, we got a gift. Um, the Zaydenu Shu is a very special theater. I own it, yes. I own the theater. It is in Burkina Faso. And we got it as a gift. We should send it to Burkina. I said, no, Christoph, you wanted to work like I do. Why do you want to send this to Burkina? No, I want these people to see that I am serious with my project. I said, no, we should not do that. A couple of hours later, I got a call from Selina, his uh, assistant. Francis, your friend is getting crazy. He's sending this container with the, with the theater to Burkina Faso. I couldn't stop him. I had to just run and work with him. And that is the container full of the theater, Zaydin Shu, and that is our, our drawings. Um, we created in a space where no one imagined something could happen, a structure that people love today. If you go there, that is what you will see. You see kids walking through the structure. And that is what he wanted to do, not an opera from uh, France or from nowhere, but something that will grow in the, in, the, in the desert of Burkina Faso. And it's growing now. We have kids crying. And this year, we have like 10 kids that have been born at the site of the opera village. And that's what he was calling. He said, you know, all of these crazy people think I am crazy. I'm not crazy. As soon as the first baby will be born there, they will understand what I was doing. But it will be late for them. And that is happening in Burkina. This is our uh, sound studio and film studio, by the way, at the Village Opera. Um, these are the housing for artists, for doctors, for teachers uh, that we was able to build. Using clay and training really people coming from not far than 10 kilometers from the surrounding. That is our healthcare center. We did it. He was talking about inspiration. He was talking about him going down, be fixed, and going up to celebrate a piece of theater. And so I was listening and said, OK, he wants to have a building like that, being inside 
and being connected to the outside with openings that looks weird, but it works. He always has this view of the desert. I want the people to come and look at through the savannah, through the desert. That is the structure I want to have. And we made it possible. Um, that is the clinic. This doctor here, Mr. Rumstad, wanted to work with Christoph. But when Christoph passed away, we didn't have that energy to keep all of, all of the partner. Then he asked me, Francis, do you mind build for me a clinic? I am thinking about the Opera Village. So we took the studio, like this, create the village, a la Albert Schweitzer, was a, a famous uh, doctor, um, and then we put them together, uh, and we arranged um, a clinic, uh, very quick. Uh, it was rainy season, that's why everything looks green. But uh, believe me, um, we use all that we could have on the site, create a space where normally, like these nomadic women here, they will never go to a doctor. But our space is so, so attractive that everyone came from everywhere and get fixed there. And you will see kids playing outside while their parents have been fixed inside. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what art, what architecture, what our, whatever job you do can do to people. So it goes, working in the, the field where I'm working, you don't get that much in the pocket. No, but you get that. It's so much. But sometimes you need that little money. You have to go where the money is, in Europe. And every time when I have a project, like uh, here in Louisiana, I was asked to design uh, a public space, an inspiration. I'm going back to Africa, to my source, to imagine how people use space there. And this uh, is how they do that. So I tried to analyze the sound. We need canopies. And then to see the primitive structure that people do is very simply to protect themselves against the sun. And I go back, create a structure. You have to, to draw. I, I learned how to draw. But I wanted to use the very cheap material that these people have in uh, Denmark uh, uh, to create something. And there to build is for me almost boring. Uh, your nation are full of technicians. I don't need to do nothing. I have to give an idea and quick, they make it, like you can see. So I get invited, I go with a nice jacket, get some wine, some nice talk, some food, and I fly back to Burkina Faso, where I can do something. So, so that is what we can do. So to bring the, 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 the climate from the desert maybe to the north, where sometimes they have a lot of snow. So, but my main concern is Burkina Faso. This is a, 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 a college that we built. Um, trying to replicate a compound. So you create a compound to protect yourself against the sun, the Sahara Desert sun. And so you put, of course, openings and uh, creating a lot of layers to protect yourself against um, the dusty wind and then introducing a wind tower. So, and uh, you see that is a city, Kudugu, and you see the desert is coming across. Uh, what we do is, this is our site, by the way, and then we have it, you mark it, don't start to build. There is no boundaries, almost sand. You have to be careful. You have to go around and ask. People will tell you who own the land. And that's what I do. Um, sit, so this guy is me. And then we have to talk to these gentlemen, so very important, to listen, and it protect you later. And after we know that the land is free for us to build, I take over control. That is me, always in action. So, um, and then try to explain plans. And then we go. Um, so this is laterite. It's a product of uh, erosion. So it's a product of des desert, you know? What I do is to just cut it. So like it is, again me, check it. They, will, they bring it to the site. And then we introduce modernity, a, a, a machine to cut the brick. To my people, it's so new, it's so, wow. It's so important, it's, it's new, it's not simply laterite. It is become, becoming more. 
because of the cutting, of the process. Uh, it becomes important, and that is the site, by the way, in the rainy season. Um, and that's how we, we build. And the, the first visitors are there, curious, looking what's happening. And the tower are growing. And we weld. Don't believe that the African just don't work. It's not true. They celebrate, of course. We do. But they work. Night. And they are introduced to the, the, the checking. You remember springing over the, the, the vault? And they do it. And sometimes I have almost heartbreaking. So <laughs> no accident should happen, you understand. But I said to them, that is how you have to test. So they keep testing all the time. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and then we have to put the metal sheeting on the top, like you see, and color. That is so important. So we have this dusty uh, red color. If it comes to color in the building site, most of the time, I start to talk with two people about color. Um, suddenly, I find myself talking to 10 people. If it is in Gando, after an hour, the entire village will come and talk about color. So what I do is just to move. Give the direction, I just go, and they make it. Sometimes you come back, and then uh, you found that it is not adequate because you think you studied in Europe and then you know how to deal with colors. It's wrong. What I have realized is I'm creating a frame for people to play. You will arrive, and then an older guy will come to you and say, you know, Francis, I fight it for, for that, this piece of color. You cannot be angry. You have to see that you inspire people to do things. That's why I call this lecture Build to Inspire. Look at what I do. When it's very hot, it can be very hot in Burkina, my people rest. No, they don't rest. I call some of them, I look at for leftover, and we start to create furniture on the building site. Uh, and that is what we do. Um, if, if the first mock-up is good, we go to a sort of industrial production, uh, and that is what we do. You will be shocked. I do these two rests. This, what you can see now, is in Philadelphia Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> I mean, it's surprising to my people. Um, I say, we have to send to the US. And they're asking me, what the f uh, is that? <laughs> so, to America, what you have been playing with us doing this? I said, yes. What are you going to do? I said, in the museum. What is a museum? <laughs> OK, another topic, let go. Sometimes you cannot communicate. Just take it like it is and go. And that is what we do. Now, this is for the classroom. Again, colors. Every class wanted to have different color. I organize, I let do. Uh, and the building has different layers. So this is eucalyptus wood. It's not you here. But this was introduced by some clever people uh, to make the soil in Africa uh, good for agriculture. Um, what I forget is this plant is so robust, it is destroying everything. So it's pushing the desert forward. But that is not my topic. My topic is find what is available, try to use it in a very sustainable way, because I just want to inspire my people. I don't want them to keep complaining, colony and whatever. This is a long time ago. This is our time, you understand, to engage ourselves and change our world. That is what I'm doing. And look at how we use it. We cut it, we polish, we finish, we fix, so, and that is a building. This is eucalyptus wood, no bamboo. We have no bamboo in Burkina, but eucalyptus work. So, one element. It can be 50 degree hot in Burkina, even more, 60 degree. That is a window, a section. How we fix it? We put eucalyptus wood, the kids can sit, but the reason why we do this is to just put, put a little uh, wet, a little humidity in the air. Uh, and that is what we do. Is every kid can put the water under the window. It cools inside. Very simple. 